Um, but good morning, and we are now going to go and move in to the um, panel session. And I just wanted to say a couple of words of introduction. Um, I'm told, by the way, there may well be a few more recorded messages and interventions during the course of the day. Um, my name's Simon Dubbins. I work for Unite the Union, which is the largest trade union in the UK with 1.4 million members, and I look after our international department and our international work. I would just want to start by, again, as many others have said, expressing the thanks to Raima and to Havin and everybody else who has organised such a great event. It's great to be here, and it's an honour and a privilege to share the platform with um, the quality of speakers that are going to be making their interventions. My union has got a long history of solidarity work internationally. We are unashamedly a very left and progressive trade union. We have stood in solidarity with the Palestinian people and sent many delegations over the years. We've also um, done a great deal of work with Cuba in defense of the Cuban Revolution and more recently uh, supporting since a number of years our comrades in their struggle in Colombia and adding and supporting their efforts in the peace process that has taken place there, particularly with support of our members and officials from the Irish region where they've had uh, experience of that type of thing. Last year, in 2016, I took part in a delegation to Diyarbakir in the middle of what was happening in the Sur district. And I can honestly say, having been to Palestine, Colombia, and many other areas, I have never firsthand seen the level of violence dished out by the state in the way in which it was being done in Sur District, Jizra, and many of the other Kurdish cities in uh, southeast uh, Turkey. We had, on the back of that, we galvanized uh, some of our support and we launched in the UK a Freedom for Erdogan campaign in April last year. And we already have a number of major unions signed up, and the indication is the second largest union is on the verge of also supporting the campaign now. We had the first fringe at our conference, a packed out fringe with a couple of hundred people and comrades from the region coming to address it. We passed our first motion calling for solidarity with the Kurdish people and indeed all progressive forces in Turkey. We called for the release of all political prisoners and Abdullah Öcalan as well. At the Labour Party conference last year, we also organised the first ever fringe meeting, which was very well attended, with over 200 people being present, and Feleknes Uka from Diyarbakir came and addressed the meeting. I'm really pleased to say that the TUC that's the confederation in the UK, which is not really known for its revolutionary politics, last year also passed an emergency motion in solidarity with all progressive forces in Turkey and the Kurdish people, but most importantly, expressly calling for the release of Abdullah Öcalan as well. We also went to witness the trial last year of Cameron Yutsak the leader of the DBP who was arrested after helping us launch the Freedom for Öcalan campaign. He was released and uh, only two weeks ago in his absence in Belgium has now been sentenced to 28 years on trumped up charges. So we're well aware, the message I want to get to you is the UK trade union movement 
The issue of Turkey and the Kurds and the struggle for freedom is going up and up the agenda. It's becoming more important and we are using every link that we have to build solidarity with sister trade unions in Europe in an attempt to help this become very much a grassroots campaign that spans the whole of this continent and further afield. So I'm really pleased to be moderating this session. I'm really pleased to be moderating the session that's coming. I think the uh, issue of ways of building and defending the new is absolutely relevant. We've heard it from the intervention on the video this morning. I'm always stunned at the level of ideology and the level of debate and understanding at these meetings. Having read a number of the books of Erjelan, I think his intellect is absolutely remarkable. And what he has managed to analyze and write and put forward as new ideas and new ways of taking our struggle forward in this difficult time are stunning when one considers the conditions under which he is trying to write and develop the ideas that we're here discussing today. I'll close on this particular note and go into the panel. Yesterday, coming from the country that has just gone through the trauma of Brexit and unashamedly having campaigned to remain despite all the problems of the EU, we understood very clearly what this means. And there is an upsurge of nationalism in the UK of the likes I've never seen. We see it in France at the moment, we see it in the Netherlands, and we see it everywhere else. And I think if one thing is absolutely clear from the discussions yesterday, it's the limitations of nation and state as a way in which to try and take things forward. And if one thing that we have got, and is constantly echoed here, it's that we don't have borders, we need to develop our international solidarity to become more effective and fight the menace that devastated this constant continent in the last hundred years, twice in the massive conflicts that it um, created and that leads to so much oppression in the region and the issues that we're talking about today. So without further ado, we'll go into the, um, the panel. I've been asked to remind everybody, please speak slowly very slowly, it should feel like you're speaking too slow and it will give the interpreters the chance. Less is always more when we're going through interpreters. So if you can bear that mind. And to the panel, we have 20 minutes per speaker the white card will come up five minutes before time so that we can at least try and leave a reasonable space for contributions from the floor. <laughs> 